Let's do some examples with electric fields. So here we have two parallel charged plates and they're separated by distance D. So maybe I can start by drawing that. Let's see. So I've got two plates. I guess you don't really have to draw them, but I'll draw them. I'll attempt to. Here's one plate. Uh, here's another plate. I'm trying to show some perspective here. Ooh. And I have a distance D between them. All right. And we have a potential V, uh, potential difference, sorry, a V across them. So this is a potential difference of V volts. This would be D in meters, I guess. Now we know that the electric field strength between them is E. So the question is, what would be the electric field strength between the plates if the distance between them is doubled? So basically we're looking at what happens if you make 2D. I think it really helps with something like this uh, is to write this down as a ratio. So what I'm going to do is first start off with, I need an equation for the electric field strength between two plates here. And you can go searching uh, for your equations, uh, but if you see on the right side of your data booklet, you can see that there's an equation that goes E equals minus, uh, let's see here, delta VE over delta R. This is the equation I'm going to need. So we can say, okay, well, this is what happens here. Look, we have E equals basically the, change, uh, the difference in potential over the distance so in this case right here, I could just define it as V over D. You okay with that? See what I've done here? And the minus isn't so important. It all depends on if it's a positive or negative charge. So um, we could leave the minuses, but when we do a ratio, they're going to cancel out anyway. So this is what I have in general. What I always like to do is write a second one. Like this is my new one. What have I done here? Here I've changed things. I haven't changed my potential difference. That's the same. But the distance is doubled. So that means it's over 2D. And again, a nice generic way to always solve these things is to just write these two things one on top of each other. So put E2 over E. Well, that's going to be, let's see, the equation for E2 is V over 2D. The equation for E is just V over D. I know I'm doing it in painful detail, but that's just because some people like to see all the detailed steps. That way I don't skip any. But if you're going to divide a fraction by a fraction, then you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So in this case here, it'll be D over V. And good news, the Vs will cancel out, the Ds will cancel out. You'll end up with E2 equals, let's see, I have a 1 over 2 here. And I have my E here that I need to then bring up to the side. So it'll become E over 2. And this will be my answer. You see how easy that was? E, Z, huh? And that's because uh, what we were able to do here is just consider uh, the effects then of um, changing the distance. If you're a little bit faster at doing this, you don't need to write down all these steps. A lot of people, you know, once you know that you're changing things, you know that the, the things you're not changing will cancel out. So, you know, when you get a little bit better at it, you don't have to do all these steps. But that's okay. I just wanted to show you every step just so I can do it. So you can say, ah, so doubling the distance between the plates makes the electric field be half. That should actually make sense because it's di it's directly proportional to uh, V and it's inversely proportional to D. So if I made D two times, then this obviously is half. So you could have seen it almost immediately just by looking at it. I just want to show you how to calculate. Uh, now comes actually a pretty easy one. What's the electric potential at a distance of 2.2 meters away from a point charge of this many nanocoulombs? You just got to watch out this. So here we're looking for electric potential. We need the equation then for electric potential. So I'm going to go look for one. Um, and I'm looking on my data booklet for one for electric potential. I have this one, uh, KQ over R. It's not squared, it's just KQ over R. This is the electric potential. Remember that's measured in volts. Well, actually, this is really easy. Look, this is one of those, it actually came up on an exam before. I, I just thought this was really nice. It's a piece of an exam, obviously, but I thought this is really pretty straightforward. Look, you just put in K. You can look it up. Uh, what is K? It's 8.99 times 10 to the 9. So this is what K is. That's just K. Q then is 0 0.39. Then I have to do times 10 to the, and watch out, nano means minus 9. Again, if you're not sure, you can always look it up. Um, actually, I'll just ignore the units. That'll all work out here. Uh, divide that by R, which is 2.2. So let me actually just try to do this on my calculator here. So I'm going to do 0.39 times 10 to the minus 9. Multiply that by 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Divide that by 2.2 and I get uh, 1.59 something. And I'm only allowed two significant figures, so I'll make it 1.6. And this will be, let's see, what's the units of electric potential? 
it revolts. You see, actually, this stuff doesn't have to be so bad. Like I said, a lot of times the key is just decoding what it is they're asking for. Find yourself an equation, even if they look weird. It's usually how you solve them. Finally comes a nice easy one here. Draw the equipotential lines between two parallel plates. So remember, um, equipotential lines are places where V, in this case here, VE is the same. Okay, they're places that have the same VE. If you think about it, uh, electric field lines, don't they go this way? Or how's it? Electric field lines, they would go that way. You know, because electric field is the direction that a positive point charge would go. And the way I like to remember is equipotential lines are always perpendicular to field lines. So that's why they'll go like this. Let's just see. Oh, by the way, what will happen then like this right here? At the edges, they'll go like this. You know, if this right here is the... This is, by the way, these are the electric field lines. That's so not potential. But I'm just trying to show you that actually they're perpendicular to each other. So this here is a bunch of pluses here, and this is a bunch of minuses. The electric field lines would do this. And most people are okay with this. Just imagine a little positive particle, throw it in there, let it go, and you'd see what would happen. So in this case, then, think about this. The equipotential lines are perpendicular to this. So that perpendicular means 90 degrees, so watch carefully. That means I would make it like this right here, but even let's even go a little bit further and see where it curves. See how it curves like that? It'll actually curve a little bit this way, like that. That's how I could draw. So if I'm really, really uh, careful, I could draw a line straight down. Whoops. I could draw a line maybe a little bit curved. And I could draw another line that's a little bit curved. Whoops. I meant to not make it curve so much. Uh, I kind of messed it up. I didn't make it look like it went down very much. This should be straight down. And after that, it should curve just at the edge here like that. So this should be parallel within the plates. They should just curve a little bit at the edges. That's it. These are places where the electric potential is the same. So I don't know what the value is. Maybe it's like 10. Um, then it'll be 10, 10, and 10. So these would be places where it's the same. Do you see how, uh, sorry, this would be 10. Sorry, this might be five. This might be eight or something. I mean, they'll, they'll be different values, but these lines mean that everywhere on this line is where it's the same. So for example, let's just say I, I decided it was 10. That means here it's 10, here it's 10, here it's 10, here it's 10, here it's 10. Here might be a different value. It might not be 10. Maybe it's, I don't know, 2. Then here everywhere is 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and so on. So, I mean, it, the numbers, well, you could always work out uh, how they go because of the pluses and minuses. But I'm just saying these are places where it's all going to be the same. I hope that helps just to put it together, and you can see that they're actually not so bad at all, the kind of questions you get on the exams. They're not bad at all.